organize and execute uh, much needed work in El Barrio. El Barrio donde yo nací y fui, fui, fui desarrollando. It was truly an honor. Um, fue un placer de verdad aceptar esta, esta tarea um, porque sabía que iba a tener el apoyo de todos ustedes. Y miren así al cuarto, porque está sumamente completo, está lleno. No hay un asiento vacío, así que muchísimas gracias por el apoyo. Jonas Sanchez, as well as Managing Director Michael DiBerdinas and Deputy Managing Director jo uh, Joana Otero Cruz for taking the lead on the administration's work in this area over the last year. Joanna grew up in West Kensington Fairhill neighborhood and her tenacity in seeing the city deliver to this community was really unprecedented. For the first time under her and the managing director's leadership along with our, our council member, the city of Philadelphia launched a coordinated cross-departmental effort to address the issues facing the Kensington West Fairhill neighborhood. Over the last year, the city has spent millions to increase the pavement of vacant homes and lots to launch community beautification projects, to add additional street lighting and police officers, to increase housing and homeless outreach, and to increase Narcan distribution and drug treatment services. Thanks to these efforts, 350 drug addicted individuals have gained access to medically assisted treatment services. 28 dangerous buildings have been demolished, 42 properties have been sealed to prevent trespassing, graffiti has been removed from 17,000 vandalized properties, and 50 new housing first slots have been added, but that is not nearly enough. But while we have made progress, we still have much more to do. And the reality is that it will take us years and years of hard work to get us to where we need to be. As you all know, and I'll have to tell you, this area crosses both the 24th and 25th police districts, two of the highest violent crime rate districts in the city. This neighborhood is also one of the centers of the nation's opioid crisis. During the month of December, we had, sadly, 35 <coughs> overdose deaths due to heroin that took place in just this area. So while I can't promise this community will be transformed in a year, what I can commit to is that our administration is in this for the long haul. Our city departments will continue to work together to address the blight, homelessness, drug and alcohol issues in West Kensington, and we will hold those other actors who are also responsible for the current situation accountable. We want to create a safe and healthy environment absent of blight, where you can walk under new high-quality lighting, along safe sidewalks, and everyone's quality of life is improved. That may seem a faraway dream right now, and while it will take it a while, it is possible, and we are committed to getting you there. And I just want to say from a personal standpoint, that it is hard, I mean, it's, I, you live here, and it is heartbreaking to see the devastation that opioid drug addiction and prescription drugs have driven people to. There's a very powerful music video recently that, um, by Macklemore, who says, my drug dealer is a doctor who wants to kill me for a dollar. That, we need to attack that as a, as a crusade. Um, doctors are supposed to do good and do no harm. And some of our doctors, sadly, want to kill people for a mighty dollar. Um, I honestly believe that despite where an individual may be in their, in their life in a particular situation, whether they are strung out on heroin or whether they are unemployed or whether they are just hopeless, they are not lost. These folks are human beings. They're our brothers and sisters, they're our, they're our grandsons and granddaughters, they're our kids. <clears throat> and despite how difficult it may seem, almost impossible sometimes, we cannot afford to give up. And I don't think anybody in this room is suggesting that we do give up. And when I look at the number of people in this room, and I look at all of the various groups that are represented in this room, from our city departments, to our advocacy groups, to our volunteers, to our community people, we continue at it working together and keeping each other in the loop and keeping each other informed and working with each other, I think, we'll, I know we'll be successful. <laughs> this opioid crisis is intense here, but it is across America. It is, doesn't, no group of people are untouched by this, from the highest and wealthiest people in this country to the poorest people in this country. We need to continue to fight to preserve the Affordable Care Act as best that we can. We need to make sure that we, we focus our national government as best we can, despite what you're hearing yesterday, sadly, and going forward. 
we cannot lose hope that together as cities and as cities and I've met with the um, US Conference of Mayors over the last week uh, New York and Chicago and Boston and Atlanta and, and uh, Baltimore and Washington DC that those cities our cities represent literally millions and millions of people that have a voice and we will unite that voice not only in this particular issue, on this particular crisis, but in everything that we deal with in social services throughout our country to make sure that people have an opportunity to meet their potential. What we've been at, at for the last year with everyone's help is trying to change the narrative of, of, of poverty through pre-K to begin with, through the expansion of community schools, through the expansion of um, and the rehabilitation of our rec centers, libraries, and parks so that there's safe places for people to be. There's development and investment that people understand that they're not forgotten, that they're, they're, that they're not, it's not hopeless, that we do care, and we do want to make sure that we show the equity that people deserve as taxpayers and residents of the city, regardless of what zip code they need. Um, this is a terrible crisis we're dealing with right outside, just three or four blocks away and throughout this community. We have the opportunity with all the folks that are, that are here today to address that in a very comprehensive way. I apologize that it's, you know, it's taken us a year almost to, to, really, to really get this plan to a point where we can start to move forward with it, but this is a decades, decades old problem. Uh, and we, were, we are committed. I am not going to rest and I'm not going to be happy and I'm not going to be, I'm going to continue to be forceful and sad about this until we get this, this crisis resolved. These are our people out there and we're going to bring them back, so thank you. working with internally with all of the um, um, all the departments um, but also with so many of you the community members community group religious groups and one person that is definitely another champion and he's definitely made this a priority is our deputy managing director Mike Dipolitis. First of all, I want to congratulate Johanna and her team for uh, not only their work up, up in Fairhill and West Kensington neighborhood here, um, but in what they do every day for the, for the citizens of this city in all neighborhoods. Also want to thank the mayor for allowing me and Johanna to turn the city towards this neighborhood and these pressing questions that you guys face up here every day as residents, as business owners, as organization leaders, uh, as elected officials, as uh, community residents. This is, uh, it's important to have the mayor support uh, and to know that we can address and work, address the, try to address the questions and work with you guys um, up here. Thank the mayor. You know, this is, for him, it's a one-year conversation, and he apologizes that we've taken so long. But for many of us, it's decades. Uh, for me, it's a nine-year conversation of trying to get people to own the challenges. And for all the empathy we want to have for the people that need uh, the services here, we have a community that is trapped, that is poor, that works hard, that is trapped. And the folks that you see around the room, from the police department, the inspectors, the police captains, the folks, the, the fire department that has to respond to these emergencies, every single department in the city, LNI, Perry at LNI, Streets and Sanitation, every single one of these departments has come into this community with an amazing amount of compassion. And I really want to personally thank all of them because you guys know how passionate and how forceful I can be. But this group of folks, when we're working at this and we're talking about this, you can sincerely feel that they respect and they know that there are amazing, great people in this neighborhood. And I want to thank them for that because it's not about them. Every single one of these commissioners this area with us, from the Office of Housing and Community Development, um, uh, obviously uh, uh, Deputy Mayor, um, Managing Director Mike DeBerdinas, Eva, everybody really, really does care. But owning the problem is just the beginning. It is, we now have a situation where there is no deniability from the federal government, from the state government, from city government about what is happening. And what we know more than anything else that we have an amazing cadre of stakeholders on the ground who've been addressing this without our coordination 
and that now we can now say, we're really going to partner with you. So Impact Services and OSSET and uh, some of the mental health providers who've been at the table with us, Prevention Point, who, when I first got elected, was operating out of a van on Gurney Street, and nobody wanted to touch them, but was leading the advocacy about this is a non-traditional problem that requires a response that is so unorthodox that it's going to make us all uncomfortable about what we have to do if we're going to take care of the people in this country. And so like the mayor, what we want to do as government, and we really want to thank the federal government, Tuggles came in two years ago, and we have become bosom buddies. And he's not here just investigating with his staff. His staff is now part of our book bag drives. Uh, for all of the community drives that we do here because they have come in here and they have also learned to love and appreciate all of the good people that are here. And so every single person, this is all hands on deck, every single person who has interfaced with this problem has owned it, has been compassionate about it, and is ready to do the work. But ultimately it is the community, the folks that are trapped in this, that we need to listen from. Because we think we have all of the solutions and we will take care of the aesthetics and we will clean it up. But the human impact of what's going on and how we address that has to come from all of you. And that's why we're here, as Mike D said, not to begin a conversation, not to end a conversation, but to commit that we will continue an advocacy and a conversation where everyone is going to be have to take it out of their comfort zone. Everyone should be challenged. Our local policies should be challenged. Our state policies should be challenged. Yes. And no bureaucracy should be allowed to say, we can't do that. Yes. We are here to yes. do that. We're going to do that. We're going to do more. And we're going to address this over time and serve as a model to the country. Because what we have that other cities may not have is an incredible capacity of folks who know what needs to get done and are not scared to roll up their sleeves and get it done. And so I am really happy that we're at this point in this journey and that under the leadership of Mike D and Joanna, who personally, as, as I am, is very invested in it, and for all of the providers that are here today, who over the years have seen this kind of develop and haven't felt like they have had the strongest voice to say, we're, we have to be part of the solution and we need government to facilitate how we better serve this community because no one knows how to serve this community than those of you who are out there in the field. So I think that's the commitment from our mayor, that's the commitment from this team that we are going to listen and we are going to facilitate what all of you have been doing every single day nice. with us um, on the ground. So. Um, Joanna, thank you, Mayor, because he's, he's really passionate about this. He knows how passionate I am. He's really, he really believes that it is about every zip code, and it shouldn't matter the zip code for folks to have a quality of life. And working poor, uh, uh, a working poor community should be proud of where it lives and should never, ever feel as trapped as we have been in this community. So thank you to all to everyone for what you've done up to now, and now let's roll up our sleeves and move this community forward. Different mentality. It seems hard. It seems challenging. It seems challenging. It seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. Is a challenge. Um, um, so, so I'm ready. I'm ready for this challenge. And I was built, and I was built for this. I think that I think we, that we all have a purpose in life. And mine's and mine's is going to take on a task that most that most of uh, Back away from that impossible. That impossible. So people, so people say, say it's impossible. I see possibilities. I don't see. Anything. I don't see anything as being impossible. Mentality. Mentality. There are different, there are different mentalities, mentalities, but just like just there's like different there's different ways, ways to teach people, people how to read. There's, there's, there's different ways to communicate people. It's different. It's different ways to communicate people.